This is the third class in the series on using powdered milk. And we're going to be talking about how to make instant cheese, how to flavor it, and how to get it to the consistency that you would like. The first thing we're going to do is to actually make the cheese. It's a very simple process, doesn't take hardly any time at all, and very little cooking. We're going to start by taking a pan and we're going to pour a little bit of oil in it, just enough that with a paper towel we can coat the sides and the bottom. And I've put this on a hot burner and we're going to let it sit here until the oil starts to smoke. In the meantime, I'm going to be mixing the milk. I've placed three cups of hot water in the blender and now I'm going to add two and a fourth cups of non-instant milk. milk I'm going to add a half a cup of oil and this will allow the cheese to melt just like any cheese that you would buy in the store. Now as you watch closely you will see the oil in the pan start to smoke. As soon as it does that, then it will be ready to pour the milk mixture into it. There's no more cooking needed once the oil is heated. Sometimes you have to get down kind of low and check it to see the, the smoke rising from the oil. And now as you can see, there, the smoke is starting to rise, so I'm going to take this off of the burner. and pour the milk mixture into the pan. You'll want to do this quickly so that it doesn't scald the bottom. To the milk, I'm going to add a cup and a fourth of vinegar. This is the catalyst that will cause it to form the curds and whey. You don't want to pour the vinegar directly to the middle of the pan. You'll want to take and pour it around the edges of the pan and you'll notice that as soon as I start to pour the vinegar in the milk starts to curdle. I'm going to gently stir it until the curds separate from the whey just like Little Miss Muffet. You'll notice that the curds are white and then pretty soon as it totally separates the whey will be a yellow color. Do not throw the whey away. This is a great product to use in making gravies and uh, to use in making your bread. It contains 15% protein, so it's very nutritious. And there are a lot of recipes in the cookbook of how to use it. Now you can see that the whey has separated from the curds. The whey is yellow and the curds are white. Let's review how to make cheese. Coat the bottom and sides of a pan with oil. Put the pan on the stove and heat the oiled pan until the oil begins to smoke. Meanwhile, mix hot water, milk, and oil in a blender. When the oil smokes, immediately add the milk mixture. Do not add it slowly or it will scorch on the bottom of the pan. Pour vinegar around the edge of the pan and stir gently until the curds separate from the whey. This particular rec recipe makes two pounds of cheese. Okay. Now I'm going to drain the cheese to get most of the whey out. So I'm going to pour it into a colander that's over the top of the pan.
Then I'm going to take and drain off the whey so that as I rinse the cheese, I won't add water to it. So there's the whey, and it can be used for all, anything that requires a liquid. Okay, so now I'm going to add hot water, and that's going to rinse off the curds and get rid of the rest of the whey that might still be on the curds. And then I'm going to add cold water to set the curds. Now the consistency of the cheese is going to depend on how long you let it drain. If you let it drain three minutes, it's going to be spreadable like cheese whiz, and you can use it on grilled cheese sandwiches, on any type of spread that you, on crackers, any other type of spread that you would like to use it for. If you want to be able to slice it, you're going to want to let it sit for 10 minutes. And if you want to be able to crumble it, then you're going to need to put it in a nylon stocking with a weight on it and let it set for an hour or so. Once it has set and cooled, then you can grate it just like you would any other cheese. In this phase, we're going to separate the curds from the whey. Pour the cheese into a colander with a bowl below to catch the whey. Save the whey for other uses. Rinse the cheese first with hot water to rinse away the rest of the whey that was there, and then with cold water to set the curds. Let it drain three minutes if you want to be able to spread it, ten minutes to slice, and pack in a nylon stocking with a weight on it to make crumbles. Then you're going to flavor the cheese and refrigerate in a covered container. Now that the cheese has set for about three minutes, it's ready to flavor. If you want Munster mozzarella cheese, all you have to do is add salt to this mixture. If you want cheddar cheese, then you're going to use cheddar cheese powder. White cheddar and red, uh, yellow cheddar are both available through our website in Mary Ann's Cupboards. To the amount of cheese that we have here, I'm going to add two tablespoons of cheddar powder. The more powder you add, the stronger the cheese is going to be. This is good, and I'm going to knead it with my hands so that I can mix all of the cheddar powder into it. It takes a little bit of kneading in order to get all the powder in. Now this is going to be pretty mild, so I'm going to add a little bit more cheese powder to it. So it's more of a medium flavor. On the website you can buy a sharp cheddar and a mild cheddar sauce that together can give you all of the different flavors that you want. If you want to add, make it a little more salty, you could add a little bit more salt to it. But that's pretty well mixed in now. Now I'm going to put it in a container and put it in the refrigerator so that it can set. Right now, it is available to just spread onto crackers or to make grilled cheese sandwiches with. If I wanted to make this sliceable, then I would have let it set for about 10 minutes and then put it into a container and push it down real firm 
and put a lid on it and put it in the refrigerator for it to cool. When it is cooled, then it will be able to be sliced. Let's review how to flavor the cheese. Let the cheese drain for the amount of time recommended in the dairy book for the consistency you desire. 3 minutes for spreadable, 10 minutes for sliced, and at least an hour with a weight on top for crumbled. Knead the cheese flavoring into the cheese until well blended. Refrigerate until ready to use. Freeze after two weeks of refrigeration to keep from developing mold. I used half the cheese mixture to make either spreadable or sliced cheese and with the other half I'm going to make cheese that you can crumble. To do this you need to dry it out as much as possible. So you're going to take the cheese and put it in a nylon stocking. I've stretched a nylon over the top of a cup. And then I'm going to press it down into the toe of the stocking. And press it down as hard as I can. And you'll notice that as I press it, moisture comes out from the cheese, which is what you want it to do. Okay, I have it down in the bottom of the stocking. Now I'm going to squeeze out as much of the whey as I can back into the cup. Then I'm going to press it into a bowl and put a weight on the top of it. Now I'm just using my hand weights that I exercise with. This one's two and a half pounds, so that will help press the whey out nicely. Now what you will probably want to do, I've shown this to you in a bowl so you can see how it works, but you'll probably want to put it over a a colander so that the whey will drip into another bowl, like so. Now it's time to review making cheese crumbles. You need to put the cheese in a nylon stocking and press the cheese into the toe of the stocking. Squeeze out as much whey as possible with your hand. Then place the stocking in a colander over a bowl to catch the whey. Place a weight on top of the cheese. Drain until desired consistency. The longer it drains, the finer the crumbles. Very fine crumbles make Parmesan cheese. Coarser crumbles make blue cheese.